In this video, our learning target will be to factor special patterns. And there's two different special patterns that we're going to talk about essentially today. The first of which I'm going to start off with is, to me, the, the easiest of all things to factor, and that's called a difference of two squares. Now, when I say difference of two squares, what should pop into your head, when I talk about difference, we're talking about the operation subtraction, and when I talk about two squares, these are perfect square terms. So, what that looks like is, the, the, the pattern literally is something squared, let's call it a squared, minus, there's your difference, something else squared, let's call it b squared. If you have something that fits that pattern, it factors simply into just a plus b times a minus b. So it's really quite simple once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to show you how I apply this in a, in a couple different examples, and I, I hope that um, you'll also feel that it's not super crazy to follow. So example one, let's factor each of these. Okay, and for part A, let's take a look at x squared minus 49. Now, to know whether it fits that pattern, I, I ask myself a couple things. I say, all right, first of all, what's being squared to give me x squared? And I know that answer is an x. And then I ask myself, all right, what's being squared to give me 49? And I know that's just a 7. I know if I square 7, I get 49. So these are two perfect squares. They're perfect squares of x and 7. And it is a difference because I have the all-important subtraction sign there. That's key. So all I do is essentially ask myself what's being squared to get me the x squared and the 49. And I write that in my first binomial with a plus sign. And I write it in the second binomial with a minus sign. And it is done. Just like all factoring, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy to check. To check, all I have to do is FOIL. If I do x times x, there's my x squared. If I do x times negative 7, that's negative 7x. And then if I add a 7x, notice when you add these like terms, they whoop whoop, they cancel. And if I do 7 times negative 7, I get negative 49. So I'm left with x squared minus, oops, don't want to write that, x squared minus 49, which is my original, right? So the answer is just x plus 7x minus 7. Let's look at b. I'll do another example. If I have, let's say, 4x squared minus 9. Now check this one out. I, it's a little bit more complicated, but it is still just two terms with a subtraction sign. It would be nice if this first term, 4x squared, is a perfect square of something. And I think it is. If you, if you square a 2, you'll get 4, and if you square an x, you'll get x squared. So I get 2x is like what my perfect square of the, uh, of the first term, and if I look at 9, I know that's a perfect square of 3. So I have 2x plus 3 to start, and then a 2x with a minus 3 to finish. If you FOIL that out, you're going to get your 4x squared, and the middle terms will cancel because of the plus and the minus sign. So, and then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So you can check that if you want, but that's all you would get for b. If you check out c, do one more with you that usually throws kids for a loop, and I'm going to include it in the video here so you don't hopefully make the same mistake. Now, this one's a little strange. Most students freak out because the x comes second in this binomial instead of first, and that throws people for a loop, but who cares? The first term is a perfect square of 6. The second term is a perfect square of x. There is a subtraction sign, so it fits the pattern. I can just do 6 plus x and 6 minus x. If you FOIL that out to check, it will work. It is factored. Let's move on to the second of the special patterns, and it's called a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. I'm just going to write tri for that. Now, this is going to be a trinomial, obviously, but the first and the last terms are perfect squares. So it looks like this, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So the key here, first term's got to be a perfect square, last term's got to be a perfect square, and we'll talk about what's going on in the middle term. 
If you know a trinomial fits that form, it factors simply into a plus b quantity squared. There's another perfect square trinomial. It's very similar. It's got an a squared and a plus b squared in the front and back, same as the other one. The only difference is this middle term, instead of being a plus 2ab, it's a minus 2ab. So if the middle term's negative, the only thing that changes is it's a minus b quantity squared. So this is going to be something to know and love if you recognize it. It makes factoring easy. Take a look at a few examples. Let's call this example 2, and we'll do a, a few of them for you. Um, let's look at A. I'm going to have x squared plus 6x plus 9. So when I look at this, before I just kind of go to the wheel and, and try to factor it that way, and it, and it could work, the first thing that I always look for is, Hey, is, is the first term a perfect square? And it is. It's a perfect square of x. And is the last term a perfect square? And it is. It's a perfect square of 3. Now, that does not mean it's going to fit the pattern. What you need to do is multiply these two together, which would be 3x, and then multiply it by 2. You have to double it, and that would be a 6x. That, if this matches what you have, that matches one of these formulas. And actually it matches the first one because that middle term is positive and, and so is this one. So what essentially this, this 2ab, you have to multiply your perfect square of the first and the last together and then double it and make sure it matches your middle term. If it does, it fits the pattern. So essentially all I have to do is write the x and a plus 3 and write it squared. Now you guys know, hopefully if you wanted to check, that if I wanted to check that, I'd have to write out x plus 3 twice, right? And I can FOIL that out. I had to get x squared, and then 3x, and another 3x, and then 9 on the end. And if you add the like terms, you get your x squared plus 6x plus 9 back, which is what we started with. So this is my answer. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to kind of slide it up here if I can to save room on the same slide. This is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now once again, it looks like maybe any other trinomial until you realize this is a perfect square of x, 4 is a perfect square of 2, and so in the middle I got to check if I multiply x and 2 together, that's 2x, and if I double it I get 4x, which matches what I have here. That's great. The only difference is here, guys, notice how this middle term is negative. That means I have to use not the first formula, but the second one where there's also a negative there. So this factors into not x plus 2, but x minus 2 quantity squared. And if you FOIL that out, multiply out x minus 2 times x minus 2, you'd actually get the same answer. Let me do another one with you so you get the hang of it. Look at C with me. This one's going to be Z squared minus 26 Z's plus, let's do 169. Now, this one looks really hard, maybe really bizarre, but the square root of Z squared is Z. The square root of 169 is 13, or 169 is a perfect square of the number 13. That's where it helps to know your perfect squares. And if you multiply these together, 13z, right, and you double it, there's your 26z, which is what I have in the middle. Be careful, though, because it's negative, I'm going to factor it into z minus 13 quantity squared instead of z plus 13 quantity squared. I'll do one last one with you. Helps to see lots of examples, I think, when you're learning something. So, last one. Let's say this is d squared plus 12d plus 36. d squared is a perfect square of d. 36 is a perfect square of 6. If I multiply these together, I get 6d. And if I double it, 12d. It matches my 12d. So I know this is going to factor simply into d plus 6, not minus, it's a plus there, quantity squared. And that is all she wrote. 
What I'd like you to try, I have a few of them. So, you try. I want you to factor each. For A, give a try to factoring x squared minus 9. B, q squared minus 100. C, y squared plus 16y plus 64. And then lastly, try w squared minus 18w plus 81. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. We'll talk about it more tomorrow.